Hey guys, this is the AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is the safe pump down of an outdoor uh, condensing unit. If you're like me, uh, basically when I started in the trades, I was just thrown right into it and asked to pump down a system. Well, you know, you don't realize how potentially dangerous it could be uh, just because, you know, people are just holding in the contactor. Uh, but I want to show you several different things that you can do to make the pump down effective so that when you're going down to zero or below zero, once you shut the unit off, you have a better chance at holding uh, that level and the pressure is not rising as much due to the refrigerant. So a pump down is done anytime you're repairing uh, something on the indoor coil or the line set or you're moving the outdoor unit. So basically what a pump down is, is you know you have the refrigerant sucking this way through the suction line into the compressor and then you have liquid coming out and feeding the metering device. So this refrigerant flow is heading towards the metering device at the indoor unit. So basically you're shutting that off and the compressor continues to suck refrigerant in. After you shut this off and, and this is all the way front seated, all the way down, you're still going to read pressure in this line. So both this pressure and this pressure are going to go down as the compressor sucks the refrigerant in to the well the compressor and then it pumps it past the compressor and into the condenser coil and the condenser coil is where the unit is storing the refrigerant at. You don't want to do a pump down if the uh, unit has micro channel fins out here um, because basically there's not enough storage for all that refrigerant so you don't want to over pressurize the coils but on standard copper coils with aluminum fins uh, that that will be fine what we're doing to to make it safer is we are turning the unit on cooling we're running the indoor fan in the indoor unit and basically the reason for that is is you don't have to hold in the contactor the other reason is the blower motor is putting heat across the coil while you're pulling the pressures down when you put a heat load across the evaporator coil, it makes sure that whatever your reading is as you're pumping it down, it's more of a true reading. And basically you're, you're helping all of the liquid refrigerant boil off during the pump down. Uh, the worst thing that happens with when people that are doing pump downs is after they get it down to zero, they shut the unit off and then the pressure is just rising. And that's because the liquid in the evaporator coil has not had a chance to boil and turn into a vapor to exert pressure in the system. So once you're down at zero, you still may have some liquid refrigerant over say at the evaporator coil and then you shut the compressor off and now the liquid ends up getting a chance to vaporize due to uh, the amount of space in the copper tubing and then pressure is applied again. So you wanna increase the heat load uh, in order to help boil off the refrigerant during the pump down process. I'm gonna take you up to the electrical compartment right up above us and I wanted to show you that this unit has a low and high pressure sensor. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to jump them out. So now we're in the electrical compartment of the outdoor unit and you have two wires coming in from your indoor unit. You have a 24 volt hot and a common or this one could be the 24 volt hot and that one could be the common. But basically you have one of those wires coming right over to the contactor the other one, if you notice, does not go straight to the contactor. It goes into this wiring mess right here, and then it goes down and in. So if I look right down inside this unit, I see that this unit has two pressure switches. But basically what happens is that then it comes out as a blue wire and comes over to this side of the contactor, allowing 24 volts to go through the coil of this contactor, and then it's gonna suck this down. When it sucks that down, that's when the outdoor unit turns on. The issue is while you're pumping it down, the pressure is going to be too low and basically you're going to lose 24 volts at the contactor and then all of a sudden your pump down procedure is going to stop because of this pressure switch. So the pressure switch may look like one of these right here, they could look like one of these, but basically this is what it looks like. You have power coming in, going to the one and then it connects to the other pressure switch and then it comes out of the pressure switch and comes over to here. It's very simple to take care of this. So with the power off, we're just gonna go ahead and pull this off right here. And then we're going to unwire not this one wire. We're gonna take 
a wire with a speed connector on the end and we're just going to go ahead and put that right into the side of the contactor so if you go ahead and turn the uh, thermostat on air conditioning in cooling mode you turn the temperature down real low and you're ready to go you really want to stay away from this compartment while the system is running there's a lot of amperage being drawn right through here you don't want to accidentally touch it and I would rather technicians not press in on that contactor with a screwdriver the entire time while they're doing the pump down procedure uh, just for safety's sake. I like to leave these service valves open and then turn the unit on in about 30 seconds afterwards or so then I go ahead and start closing this liquid line down. I don't want to give the compressor too hard of a time starting up by shutting this valve ahead of time so I just I turn the system on just like normal. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this unit on now. You may need a adjustable wrench just in order to start this and then you're going to go ahead and front seat this all the way down. And now we're going to need to anticipate when we're going to shut this suction line valve. So make sure that you've already uh, broke it loose from the top. They shouldn't need to be broken loose on these with the uh, valve cores in them. Only the stem three position stem valves. But you see that where pressure is coming down, we're gonna to wanna to start closing this off. This is down in vacuum right now, but we're still at about 30 PSI here. You can hear the compressor starting to make a little bit of noise. Let's go ahead and let it finish off over here. And there we go so we're still in vacuum over here and we want to make sure that we got this side below zero now what we're gonna do is we're gonna wait about five minutes or so just to see if the pressures are going to rise we're at about 10 inch HG 11 inch HG if this system had a leak you would not want to pump it down below zero PSIG because what will happen is it'll actually suck in the air from outside through the crack or hole and it's gonna go into the system and contaminate it so for something like that, you might want to pump this side down until this gets down to maybe uh, 5 PSIG or so, and then shut the valves, and then you're going to go ahead and get a recovery machine, and you're going to bring that down to 0 PSIG on both sides. If you're worried about old valves and you know air getting in through those valves, sometimes it's just a little overing on the sides and the inside here. If you're concerned about that, then don't pump it down below 0 PSIG. So just shut them off, lock the refrigerant in here, and then just recover the rest with a recovery machine and recovery bottle. The object of a pump down uh, though is basically to get all of it done without the recovery machine uh, having to get pulled out. You're just using the systems compressor. So it's been about five minutes and we're at four inch HG so we are holding the indoor blower motor still running so if there was any liquid in the system it would have vaporized by now so that was a successful pump down. If you're looking for any of the tools used in this video I have them linked down in the description below. If you want to help support this HVACR training channel, click right here. If you want to subscribe, click right here. And if you want to see more HVACR training videos, click right here. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AEC Service Tech Channel.